Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode. This week I will tell you the five worst things, the five bad things about being a poker dealer. So stay tuned. dealer is fun. Generally speaking, it's very, very fun. You know, every day is a different day and it's good money and it's just, you know, if, if you can have the right attitude, it's a great job. I'm not going to lie to you. But, you know, dealing for 12 years, there are some things that come across that make poker dealing bad. And I'm going to give you the good and the bad. Last week, last week I gave you the good. This week I'm going to give you the bad. So, we're going to go into the five bad things about being a poker dealer. First bad thing about being a poker dealer is your work schedule. Uh, unfortunately, when you're a poker dealer, you have to work in a casino. And unfortunately, you have to work times and days that you probably won't. That means you have to work weekends, you have to work nights, and you gotta work holidays. And I've suffered through many, many days where I've had to work weekends and work nights and work holidays um, because that's when the people come to play poker. I mean, they're gone, they're off, they're from their part of the world, they come to Vegas, they're on vacation. So on like Labor Day or Christmas or whatever, they need somebody to deal cards. And unfortunately, if you're a poker dealer, that's the best time to make your money. But unfortunately, you lose family time. and. I've missed many Thanksgivings, many Christmases, a lot of three-day weekends I've had to work. Um, when I first started dealing, I had to work nights, I had to work graveyard, it ruined my sleep. Um, I still have to work weekends uh, in my job. So, you know, you don't really have a normal schedule. I mean, this is not a nine to five job. I mean, this is not a Monday through Friday, nine to five job. This is not the way this industry works. And it's not the way you're gonna make real money in this, in this, in this industry. You know, it sucks, you know? You know, sometimes your daughter has a birthday, sometimes your wife has a birthday, and you know, Christmas, like I said, Thanksgiving. Um, you know, you have to miss it, because you have to work. And I, I knew this going in, and 12 years later, um, I tolerated it. I really haven't accepted it, but I do tolerate the fact that I have to work weekends. So, if you wanna be a poker dealer, unfortunately, the drawback is you have to work weekends, holidays, and nights. The second bad thing about being a poker dealer, and this is something that you can probably control more, but it happens a lot. We are the messengers of the cards, but unfortunately, we get blamed a lot for the messages that we deliver. And the players, they play bad or they get unlucky and they have to blame somebody. They get mad. So they, who's, who's, who are they going to blame? They're not going to blame the player. They're going to blame the dealer. And what you got to do is you got to be... So in the 12 years I've been dealing, I've been threatened three times. I've had people curse at me. I've had cards thrown at me. I've had people wish ill will on me. I actually had a guy wish I had was hit by a bus. He actually said that I wish you get hit by a bus. <laughs> yes, he actually said that. And in this industry, you know, one thing you got to have is thick skin. You cannot be thin skin in this industry because people will always blame you for their bad play or the luck, the bad luck that comes in poker. And what you got to do is you can, you, can, you can deal with this in two ways. One is you can ignore them. And that's what I generally try to try to ignore ignore them. The second thing is you can give it back to them, which is not not <laughs> the best way to do it. But if you're dealing with a player who will who understands it, you can give it back. And I there's some times where I give it back to the player in a fun way. And you know, even though they're mad, after a while they kinda let it go and then you're back to being normal again. So yeah, I mean like I said it happens a lot. So like I said the second reason for being bad is the players will blame you whenever they lose. 
The third reason, the third bad thing about being a poker dealer is it gets a little repetitive. You become a, ro a robot because you just sit there and just deal cards all day long and you, you, you get up and you, next day you do the same deal cards all day long and after a while you deal some more cards all day long and after a while you kind of feel robotic. Um, and sometimes you get complacent. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes when I'm dealing cards and I'm in the middle of a day and it's been a long day and I deal, I push, to a, I push into a table and I become a little bit complacent and I tend to kind of look up, look around. You know, I'm still professional. I still, you know, don't make any mistakes. I don't, I barely make any mistakes as a dealer because I pretty much can deal with my eyes closed. But, you know, sometimes you're just looking around and you're just... You're looking at the, the bar, you're looking at the pretty girl that walks by, you're looking at these drunk guys that walk past you, you're looking at this, this, the, the show come to your right, and you just deal. You just deal. And sometimes that repetitive nature can uh, get to you a little bit. You know, sometimes I'm, I push in a box and just, that's the way it is. And I just look at the clock, waiting for the next down, waiting for it to leave, and and it's like that with all, a lot of um, um, casino games that you deal. You know, you do the same thing over and over and over again. And if you're a guy that likes to go do things and like to do different things every day, um, poker deal is probably not the job for you because you have to pretty much do the same thing over and over and over and over again. The fourth reason it's bad to be in poker dealer is probably the obvious. Um, you work in a casino, and people smoke in a casino, people drink in a casino, people are loud in a casino. So you have to deal with stuff like that, especially the smoky part. Even though most poker rooms now are like um, not smoking, I mean, it's hard to really escape the smoky atmosphere of a poker room because, you know, there's a bar over here, maybe. And you're walking through the casino, maybe you're going on break, and you pass, go through the pit area, and people are smoking, and you have to breathe in that secondhand smoke. And if you're a guy like me who doesn't smoke, it, it, it kind of bothers you a little bit. And every day I walk through, sometimes I just walk, and there's like this big, someone would just blow like this cigar smoke, and I walk right into it without even knowing it. And you just, you just breathe that in, and your, your face is like all smoky, and your clothes are smoky. So even though you deal in an environment that generally has not smoking, the other aspects of the uh, poker job is, you have, like I said, you have to walk through the casino and you got to feel that smoky breath. So it sucks. And it's not really the healthiest environment to be in. But that's the price you pay for being a poker dealer is you have to work in an environment where people smoke. And the fifth and final reason it's bad to be a poker dealer is unlike casino games where you can deal blackjack or craps roulette to one player, in poker, if only one person wants to play poker, you're not gonna make any money. Because you need at least five or six people that wanna play poker to make money. Um, and when that happens, especially when you're in a slow environment like sometimes poker is, if you're in a, if you're in a casino where sometimes it's hard to get games going, you could be sitting there and one person or two people want to play poker, but they don't want to play two players. They don't want to play heads up. So you're not, you're not dealing. So you're not making any money. And sometimes in this industry, there are weeks where nobody wants to play poker. And then as a result, you're not going to make any money. I mean, if, if the casino you work at is really, really slow, like you can walk through a uh, blackjack pit and maybe one player is playing blackjack, one player is playing craps, and one player is playing roulette. Those dealers are still going to make money because what it, they they're going to get tipped, and whatever they get, and, they, and, they, and they're going to share their tips. So even if they're dealing to just three people playing, they're going to make money. If you have three players that want to play poker, ninety percent of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, they're not going to want to play because they want more players. And so you're sitting there, and you're not making any money. And that's another thing that sucks. Sometimes the money is inconsistent. It really, really is. It really is inconsistent. You know, some days you make, on a busy day, you make $200. And if it's real, real slow, you make 40 or you make 50. 
It's the nature of the beast, guys. It's the nature of the beast. Um, especially if you work in a low limit card room like I do. Um, I mean, I, you know, if you work in a, this doesn't really pertain to uh, casinos that have big poker rooms like the Bellagio or Venetian or the Wind that has a lot of games all the time. They're going to make their money no matter what. But rooms like the one I work at, um, some weeks it's slow and some weeks it's busy. And the slow weeks are tough. They're very, very tough. And they can put a really, really strain on you financially, especially if you've got to pay your bills or just to have money to pay your rent or your mortgage. It sucks. And the pressure's there. The pressure's there when you walk into a poker room and there's no games going. You know, and you get this, like, achy feeling like, if I, am I going to make any money today? Am, am I going to, you know, pay, be able to pay my mortgage today? You know, because I walk into a poker room, there's no, there's no games. And that's the scary part about being a dealer in a low limit room. That some some the um, the um, what's the term the um, the not knowing is tough. The not knowing if you're gonna make money if your room is slow is very very tough. If that is the five bad things about pink and poker dealer. Uh, like I said before, like in every profession, every job, there are good. And there are bad. And what you gotta do is you gotta balance out the good and bad. That with, with everything that's good, there's gonna be bad. And everything that's bad, there's gonna be a lot of good. If you just keep your sanity in check and just know what you're getting into as a poker dealer, you can survive in this industry. And for somebody who's done it for 12 years, I have survived. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends, comment, like, and subscribe. Come back next week for another video of the Confessions of a Low Limit Professional Poker Dealer.